Keith, uh, a really entertaining game. 2-1 to finish to Aston Villa this evening. Um, and whatever about, we'll talk about the performance in a moment of the Aston Villa team, but I'm sure psychologically to get over Leicester City in the table up into the top half, that's going to be a huge boost for Stephen Jarrett when he goes out to train those players during the week. Yeah, you know, it's been a, an outstanding start from him. You know, when you're coming down from Scotland, there is that question mark. Even with Brendan Rodgers, when he came back down, you're thinking, can he cut it with Leicester? He's obviously proven that he can. Played four games, Stephen Gerrard won three, lost one to Manchester City. Looked really good in the three games. Even looked really good against Manchester City, if uh, all, if we tell the truth. It, it was a loss, but it was a fighting loss, and that's something you can stomach as a, as a, as a Villa fan. And... The one thing that stood out for me, I'm, I'm not trying to pick holes in Dean Smith, I, I actually think he was harshly treated in, in uh, being let go, but the work rate, even in the first half, wasn't quite clicking. I know the concert got the header, but it just wasn't really, uh, I got the little flick, it was the Buendia header, but it wasn't really clicking in the first half, but the, the work rate was there, the desire was there for me, and in the second half they looked a lot more threatening, and the desire was still there, it was backed up, and it was just encapsulated with John McGinn, when you see him going through them three or four tackles toward the end, I know I know the 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 whistle was blown but it's just a desire and the war great of him and when you see somebody like that who has bags of talent but he has that that desire and that fight to just go to go through two or three channels challenges it just goes through the rest of the team and you can see what Steven Gerrard is working on if he can just make them that little bit more defensively solid I think that's a really strong Villa team and you know I, I I wouldn't say the sky's the limit because the, the Premier League is that strong at the minute but you know to be 8th, ninth, seventh, I think that's in around Villa's area yeah, and we did see, you know, Stephen Gerrard and perhaps his assistant Gary McAllister, I'm sure does great work in the changing room at half time as well. But they definitely had an effect on that game because we saw in the first half Manny Cash was having a torrid time on the right hand side against Harvey Barnes. John McGinn perhaps wasn't, you know, getting out there and helping him enough. You know, we saw the full backs maybe they were they were really pressed back into their own half, Maddie Cash and Ashley Young by the good attacking player Leicester City. But that all changed in the second half and you'd have to put that down to good coaching. Yeah, well, you could see, uh, I highlighted Harvey Barnes in the first half. He looked like he had the, the beatings of Matty Cash all day long and it proved to be when he sees his goal, once or twice he left Cash behind and the centre-halves weren't coming across to help him. But in the second half, as the, as the build-up was playing in, in the centre of the pitch, you could see that Harvey Barnes wanted the ball, but Cash was coming with him. He was prepared to leave that gap in between the two centre-halves. And it was just it was just a lot more solid. And as the ball was travelling to Harvey Barnes, you could see Matty Cash was on his way. So Harvey Barnes didn't really have a lot to do in the second half because Matty Cash defended so well. And offensively, well, he was brilliant. He, he kept Matty Cash in his own half, or sorry, uh, Harvey Barnes in his own half quite a lot. So... When Harvey Barnes did get the ball, he was 70, 80 yards away from the Villa, the Villa goal. And when he got close to the goal, Matty Cash, was he was all over him. He was really, really marking him tightly. And the, the rare occasion that he did get away from in the second half, you know, uh, Marvellous McCanza was coming over there, Douglas Louise. And as you say, John McGinn gave him a good hand as well. So, But that would have kept Stephen Gerrard at half time. You know, sometimes when you're playing, you can't really spot these things in real time. So I think Gary McAllister and Stephen Gerrard identified that. And that, I think that was a little bit of a turning point because the one... Out to the out ball that Leicester always had was the Harvey Barnes one v one, and go from there. When that when that avenue finished for uh, for Leicester, it got a bit dull. That's when Villa really started to get on top. And for me, you know, Leicester could have got something out of that game, but I, I think Villa Villa deserved to win in the end. The other thing as well is that you know we saw the strikers Ollie Watkins, Jacob Ramsey getting into the box and a couple of decent chances, but the fact that two goals came from the centre back. Esri Conza, we've seen the fullbacks getting goals under Gerrard, so maybe that's something as well that he needs to look at is you know, the strikers finishing and scoring goals because they're the players that get paid the big money to score goals for you. Yeah, well of course listen, the one the one that we look at, I think we can give Ramsey a bit, cut him a bit of slack, he's a young boy, he's still cutting his teeth in the Premier League they still have uh, Danny Ings to come in I'm a big, I played with Danny at Burnley and he knows the way to goal and he, he's so over five yards, he's electric you don't, you don't see it until he's standing next to somebody, you see how quick he is over them five yards, a prolific finisher as well so Villa still have him to come back as well so Villa are going to get stronger and across the same can be said for Leicester, they have a whole host of bodies to come back so Although I would be critical of Leicester today, you can sort of see it, you know, it's not as strong a team as it could be with the amount of bodies to have out, particularly Yuri Tillemans. I think he's a big, big player for them. And Madison, although, you know, he has the stats to back up that he's having a good period, I think he's come off the boil ever so slightly. He's been quiet today, Daka working hard, but just didn't really click up front for, for Leicester. At times you could see the talent is there, but just didn't click as well as it did for, uh, for Villa. 
come back to Leicester in a moment as well, but just to ask you as well about Philly, you know, we've seen other players or players falling out of favour with the previous manager, Dean Smith, and again, it's not a criticism of him. These things happen at a football club, but we've seen Tyrone Mings coming back in. Marvellous Nakamba has been excellent under Gerrard as well, and just little things like that as well would also give Aston Villa supporters hope, I'm sure, when you see Gerrard working with players like that, and they start putting in performances for him. Yeah, well, if you're Marvellous Nakamba and you're in the building and you know, you're not really getting a kick under Dean Smith, but then all of a sudden one of the best centre midfielders in the modern era comes in and he picks you to play. All of a sudden you're, you're, on, you're on cloud nine, you're thinking, well, if he fancies me, I should fancy myself, and all of a sudden your confidence is up. And like you say, over the last four games they've won three, only lost to Manchester City. That's going to breed confidence as well. So really, really good. And I think with Gerrard coming in the building, I think everybody wants to prove that they can play football to a footballer, especially somebody as good as Steven Gerrard. So I think everybody at Villa, the walk rate has gone a little bit higher and it looks like they want to show their talent as well and fair play to Stephen Gerrard because he's obviously given the lads the platform to go and do it. You see him once or twice, he's a bit edgy playing out from the back but Gerrard is saying, listen, it will break down once or twice, the ball will end up in the back of our net but that's the team I want and this is how I want to play and you can see the crowd are going to have to come on board with that as well because sometimes they were getting on the back when it was getting a little bit dodgy but overall, you can see the stepping stones are there, the, uh, the results are there for Villa really good and good to watch and like I say I'm really excited to see where they go You mentioned a moment ago that maybe 8th or ninth might be the kind of position they'd like to finish this season under Gerrard um, that's a position that a lesser city I'm sure would have hoped to finish much higher than after their last couple of seasons almost getting Champions League football but it just seems to be coming apart at the seams for them at the moment and the thing about the set pieces um, about corner kicks they conceded 10 which is the joint worst uh, alongside Crystal Palace You'd imagine within a team, and you've been in football teams where things are going wrong, when there's a perception from outside the club that there's a weakness there, it suddenly starts to become a thing, and maybe players are starting to lose confidence in each other. You know, don't trust the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper doesn't trust his defenders. I don't know how that works, but is, do you think that could be something that might be happening with Leicester City at the moment? It could be. Obviously, the the opposition will highlight it because that the, the numbers don't lie, so... Stephen Gerrard would have had a look at that and thought, right, every time we get a chance to put it into the box, we're going to put it in, put it in with pace, make it make it dodgy for the goalkeeper. And at times, you know, it really was lacklustre defending. There was one in the first couple of minutes where Schmeichel had a crowd of bodies around him, but he done well. He came out and got a fist on it. It went up in the air, and I think it was uh, Thomas and uh, Castagna, I think it was, the two of them just in the way of each other, none of them getting rid of it, and Villa ended up getting the ball recycling and putting it back into the box and you know at the highest level you will get punished for that they didn't get punished for it today overall they did with the set piece at that particular set piece they didn't it's just something that needs to be worked on but like I say the, the opposition will highlight that and they'll put even more balls into the box so it's going to be highlighted more and more every weekend and the more them numbers keep rising with the set pieces the more the ball will keep coming into the box so it's not going to get any easier for Leicester they're going to have to start defending them really well I think Johnny Evans and Soyuncu big fans of them I'd love to have them in any club I support but at the minute Johnny Evans just looks a little bit fragile I know he has his injury where he's looked really good today but just looked a bit fragile sometimes when he's getting knocked about and he's in the wars you're thinking is he going to stick up with this is he going to come off and it's just it's just not so you want to come off the boil as well so a whole host of bodies missing as well mm. for Leicester so there's a lot of things that need to be improved for Leicester but like I say with so many games coming over the next 6-8 to eight weeks if they can pick up a couple of wins they could easily find themselves exactly where they want to be Yeah absolutely because Rodgers did prove in previous seasons that he could deal with injuries bring players in and still get the results you look at yesterday the likes of West Ham beating Chelsea they were the kind of results Leicester were getting when they were strong under Rodgers um, West Ham seems to be the team now that the outside team that might have a chance of getting the top four place. Do you think Leicester City could do what they did over the last couple of seasons? Or do you think maybe that, you know, dropping into 11th place after 15 games kind of says to you, I don't think they're going to be too near the top four this season? Um, from what I've seen today, I, I wouldn't back them to, to break the top four. I've, I've come under a bit of criticism because I have said, I, in my opinion, I think West Ham are a better team than United this mm. season. I think they're better than Arsenal. I think they're the best of the rest, to be honest, which I think they, on on the whole, you know, it's all going to be how, how far United go in the Champions League, how far West Ham go in the Europa League. That will obviously play a big part. But who's the better team for me? The better team for me is West Ham. I think they're the best of, obviously, Chelsea, City and Liverpool. 
I think West Ham slot in at fourth. Arsenal looked to have hit a bit of form, obviously, as well. I think Conte will do good things with Spurs. Whether or not we see that this season, it might be a delayed reaction to next season. So there's a great race on it. It's all over the, all over the, the Premier League, you know. We had uh, Chelsea top for a stage yesterday, then Liverpool, then City at top, and all three of the bottom clubs were on 10 points, with Watford just three points above that. It's it's the strongest Premier League I've seen, and like I say, we still don't know who's going to, after we come into January, it will really st- start to take shape, and we'll start to see who's going to be the bottom clubs and who's really going to push away and be the top clubs. As we heard from our own commentary team on the United-Crystal Palace game, it didn't sound like a classic, but I suppose for a new manager like Ralph Ranić coming in, a very disjointed team that he took over, it's just about getting that first result. You don't care how it comes, what score it is, even if it's someone like Fred getting the winning goal, yeah. you don't care. You just get that, the, the three points. Well, that's it. It's nice for Fred as well because he's come under a lot of criticism from a lot of people for his performances. So for him to get a, a goal to win the game today under a new manager could be just a little bit of a turning point for Fred and his Manchester United career. And I hope so because he seems like a good lad. He seems very willing worker as well. And mm. you can't really not like them lads. I know sometimes you can say he hasn't got the talent to be at United, but he, he's given 100% every week, week in, week out. And that's not something you can say about a lot of the United players so yeah United I think Ragnick will just be happy to get the win it's very difficult for him because he has, he plays a pressing game and with the amount of games that are going to come over the next couple of weeks for Manchester United to do that sort of work on the training ground it's very difficult it, it, yeah. it zaps your legs to do them sort of runs in and out in and out so he, he won't really get to do the bulk of the work on the training ground. It will be done on match days. So it will be played out in our eyes and it, it's going to be very interesting to see if he can do the press with, with Ronaldo, if he does it without Ronaldo, how he's going to go about it in the long run. But yeah, to get the win today, wasn't a, wasn't a great game, but got over the line in the end and I think the United fans will just be happy with that. Yeah, it's an interesting point, I suppose. A lot of people mightn't have considered just that time on the training pitch and how hard it is to get in the middle of a season. Um, But just to ask you finally then as well about that kind of moving around in the top three. Liverpool, you know, (laughs) we saw it in our own league back here. Shamrock Rovers getting all those late winners and equalisers to get points on their way to win the league title. We've seen in the past great Manchester United teams always knew how to get late results. Liverpool getting that one, Mo Salah setting up David Carrigi to get the winner against Wolves, and that's just the kind of thing that Jurgen Klopp will love to see, and the kind of thing that he will hope to give his side a good boost going over the Christmas period. Yeah, well, it just it just breeds confidence, doesn't it? When you when you play a game and it gets to the ninety minute, and you see five minutes being added on, you're thinking, ah, oh, we've got a draw here. We just get out of Molyneux with a draw, we'll be happy enough. But they go and win the game, and not that any of the Liverpool players would have needed confidence because of the way they play, but just that little bit of extra. Even when we don't play well, when we don't think we're going to win the game, we still come up with something. And the one thing that's been thrown out at Liverpool over the, uh, the last couple of years is that Chelsea and Manchester City have a much better bench than than they do. Obviously, the starting eleven is outstanding, but as you come away from that, a couple of injuries, Deebok Origi and the likes coming on, you know he gets a bit of a hard time, Deebok Origi, but he scores important goals. You know you, you only have to look back through his Liverpool career to see the important goals he scores. So if they, if Liverpool can keep getting their boys to come off the bench and chip in when uh, when the starting eleven aren't really firing, they've every chance of doing. It. And uh, listen, I, I can't split them. I really can't split yeah. Chelsea, City, Liverpool. I, I don't know which way it's going to end up. Yeah, it really is hard to pick it out. But I suppose, well, looking at Manchester City last night, watching their game against Watford, well, when, they, when they're pouring, they really are pouring. But it was interesting actually watching Jack Grealish. Um, and I suppose maybe a man who's played as a winger, and he's maybe asking to play the centre role last night. But you just got the feeling of Grealish that he was, he was almost trying too hard to score, that it just was, and he was becoming more and more frustrated then that it wasn't coming off him. Yeah, well, I think that's the difference with being at Villa and being at City. I think every but when people got the ball at Villa, they were looking, where's Jack Grealish? Where is he? We try and get him on the ball. At City, he's just another fish in the pond. You know, everybody on that pitch for City has outstanding ability and can can do anything they want with the football. So they're not looking for him as much as they were. And you know, Jack Jack, he, he gets he gets a lot of fouls. But you know, the City City don't want to be winning fouls. City want to go past it and keep keep the counter attack up. And when they break the line, they want to go and hurt you. So when when Jack breaks the lines, he's happy enough to take the foul and restart from there. I don't think that's what Pep wants. He thinks when you break the line, go for the jugular, don't come back. And I think that's just a little bit of a mismatch with him and Manchester City at the minute. I think if he plays a little bit more like uh, like Mares or like Sterling, which is obviously a big ask of his, being a predominantly centre of the pitch player. But look, all the talent is there, and with Pep Guardioli, he's got a six-year contract. We, the best of Jack Grealish is still yet to come. Great stuff, Keith. Thank you. Cheers.